I'm Michael Flessner, Extension uh, Weed Specialist at Virginia Tech with Virginia Cooperative Extension. And we're staying in front of uh, John Deere's new Sea and Spray Ultimate Sprayer uh, with Marshall from James River Equipment, our local uh, John Deere dealer here in Virginia. Marshall, could you just give us an overview of, of what this technology is and what its capabilities are? So what we have here is John Deere's newest addition to the sprayer lineup, Sea and Spray Ultimate. What this sprayer does is it drives across the field using 36 cameras to sense weeds and crop with the cameras and just spray the weeds so you're not broadcasting the chemical over the whole field. And it can do that in which crops? It's approved for corn, soybeans, and cotton up to 15 miles an hour and 15 inch rows in corn and beans at this time. That's, that's pretty impressive. So when you use the sea and spray technology, obviously you're going to be reducing the amount of product volume there. Correct. Obviously all these dependent on the weed density you have out there, but are there any, any kind of product savings you can speak to? It's really hard to talk on product savings with this because like you said, it's all dependent on weed pressure, how good a program you have up front and what the sensitivity is set on the machine. But deer is not really saying what they're seeing, but certain growers are saying anywhere from, you know, 10, 20 percent, 30 percent savings on chemicals, but it, it all is going to be grower dependent. So one of the new features with this is the on the ultimate platform is the, the boom stability. Can, can you talk about that? Yes. And why so that's what, important? So what Deer did is they realized that they had to increase the boom stability to keep the cameras at the right height while they're spraying. So what they did is they went in and added a roll sensor in the back, completely redesigned the boom attaching mechanism to the sprayer and added two more boom track pro sensors to the boom for even more survey of the terrain to help with the boom side to side and up and down feature. And there, there's also a sensitivity setting that the operator can adjust inside the cab in terms of how sensitive is it picking up small weeds? Yes, the, you can go from a heavy setting which is gonna pick up anything that it thinks might be green down to a light setting that is going to be where it's not going to leave anything that's green, but it's not going to pick up as small a pieces as it does on the light set setting. So what's the, what's the price of the equipment? Right now, this sprayer, as it's set up with the sea and spray, exact apply is list price right around 850000 seems expensive, but it costs more to make a sprayer like this with all the technology that's in it, all the extra plumbing that's in it, in order to see a savings in chemicals. So it's not really about the price of the machine, it's more about the cost savings you see in chemicals is what pays for the sprayer. In addition to the per acre fee when you're running the sea and spray Correct. technology? Okay. Correct. So. The way it works now is there's a per acre fee to spray in corn and beans and then a separate pricing structure to run in cotton. Uh, the corn and beans, as well as I can remember, is $3 an acre and the cotton acre is $4 an acre to run the sea and spray technology at this time. And there's also a fallow mode, right? The green on brown. This is, and that's the fallow mode, green on brown. Right now there is no charge for that, so that is what deer's doing to try to get people interested in it. And that's what we did today. We did a fallow mode, just brown on green. Yep, and it, and it worked really well out there for sure. Yes, it so. did. It was nice blue dye out here being sprayed today. Yep. So one of the features is, is the dual tanks. And a pretty common question is, how do I know how much to mix up? Because I don't know how much I'm gonna spray till I actually spray. <laughs> that, that's a good question. Um, it all depends on your, total acres that you want to go over is what I've been telling people. So if you're a thousand acre grower and you're spraying 10 gallons to the acre, the front tank, the sea and spray tank will do 45 acres. So I'd suggest you mix up a full tank, go out and spray till you run out the first tank and see how many acres you've covered and that'll give you a judge as to how much to mix up for the second tank to spray so you know how it's going because that should be pretty indicative 
of the weed pressure you have and that's what causes seeing spray to work is your weed pressure yeah so like with anything once you get some more experience that's really your best guide correct that's it's just a good experience based because you might this time you might go over a thousand acres and spray 600 acres the next application you might go over the same thousand acres and only spray 100 acres it's just going to depend on weed pressure at this time what are the, the challenge conditions? I know a lot of people are interested, like, well, what if the weed's right in that, that crop row and the can crop canopy's kind of over it? Or um, if I've got, um, like, spraying double crop soybean and there's wheat stubble out there, are those challenging conditions, or is it still capable of detecting those weeds? Those are challenging conditions, and all the testing that we've seen from deer, it's pretty accurate in those situations you've described. It's all going to come down to exactly where the weed is at. And that's why most times you're running over the crop once or twice anyway. So hopefully if it misses it the second, the first time, it's going to pick it up on the second pass. Mm -hmm. Okay. So th and this gen equipment generates a map uh, when you're done. That's how, how exactly does that work? So the way this machine works is this machine is connected to John Deere Operations Center. So what it's doing is every four seconds, it's feeding information to the Operations Center and generating a map. And you can watch it almost real time from your phone, your computer, your tablet. And what it's doing is every time the sprayer turns on and sprays, it's making a red dot on the map and that is where your weed is so it you can look back at the map when you're done and say okay why do i have so many weeds in this one spot and you can go out and physically look at it as the owner if you've got a hired man spraying and you can say okay evidently i missed here with my pre application of herbicide or there's not any crop here and it drowned out and i've got weeds coming in so it gives you a, another tool to look at more data to see what is causing the issue. So how does a, a farmer know when they're operating the machine that it's it's actually working well, it's, it's hitting the weeds um, and, and not spraying where there's not weeds? You can look at back behind you because with auto track you're not having to pay attention to where you're driving. So you can actually look out the window and see the machine turning on and you can see the weeds and physically see it pulsing and turning on spraying and covering just the weed and not spraying the weed because you're not concentrating on driving you use another deer technology auto track so that's one way you can verify that it's working another way is depending on what chemical you're spraying is going back out in three or four days and seeing if you're seeing weeds die or not then you know you've got an issue mm -hmm. another question i've heard is, is what about night spraying right now the Sea and spray technology is only approved for daylight use because the cameras need light to be able to see the green. So right now it's only approved for daylight spraying, but you can go cloudy days doesn't bother you because there's enough sunlight for the cameras to work. So right now it's just daytime spraying. So we'll see what comes in the future. We never know. All right. Where might this technology be going in the future? I mean, once we've got cameras on a boom that can sense things, um, maybe variable rate fertilizer application, insecticides, fungicides, do, do we know that? We don't know that, but there are a lot of possibilities with these cameras because they're constantly adding parameters to what the cameras can see and what they don't see. And the technology, I think, is getting ready to just really explode with this camera because if you're driving across a crop, and you've got a camera taking a 120 foot wide view of all the way across all of your fields, there's gotta be somebody out there that's gonna introduce some technology to make the cameras better, to, you know, we already got, you know, infrared cameras coming out on drones, so who's to say they don't add infrared cameras to spray it or measure crop health? Yeah, lots of possibilities in the future. It'll be an exciting space to, to watch. Correct. Great. Well, thanks so much for your time today. It's great to see this equipment run. Very impressive. Glad to be here.